Frank Warren just want to touch on that. Still so cagey about whether it's going to happen in June. He's not committing. He's not committing, but he's like Frank a bad poker a player. He, he's <laughs> desperate for it to happen. You go away and have a long rest. We'll speak tomorrow afternoon. <laughs> That's basically what he said. I know he said seven days, but he meant, OK, tonight we're OK. We're OK till midday. I'll give you a call before Sunday night. Yeah, he's not fooling Rick. anybody, is he? And you know what? You know, Nathan, Nathan's a fit man. Fit men recover quicker as well, OK? So he's not leaving there after bad preparation. He's prepared brilliantly. He'll be, I swear to you, you went and see Nathan, say on Wednesday, you wouldn't believe he's been through these 36 minutes here. He, he'll recover like that. He's that type of athlete. Brad Pauls will want it. I think it's an easy fight to make. I know there might be a world title fight out there, but you know what? Why can't we have that outdoors in September? Let's go outdoors. Let's go in June. Let's go with a rematch. Someone send Steve Bunt to Frank Warren right now because <laughs> you're selling it. You're selling it for me. But let's have a look back on this fight because Nathan said he controlled the first six rounds. Would you agree, Carl? Yeah, I think he did. There may have been a round that, that Paul's won. Um, maybe a couple, actually. But I think he was in control at the halfway point. I, everybody in here had Nathan in control. Paul's then started to come into the fight. Nathan's feet slowed down. He started to... We talked about the good work he was doing with his lead hand. He's, he kind of neglected that a little bit. And he looked tired at times tonight yeah, as well. He did. But it was a grueling fight. Both guys fought it at an extremely high pace. I mean... Uh, just it's, it's that Lonsdale belt thing. That's what they talked about. Honestly, it's the Lonsdale belt thing. Yeah. They both talked about it. It's the raw emotion that takes extra. Can stuff I ask out you a you? question? Bunsy does the, and I genuinely don't know this. Does the does a draw count as a defence? So you have so for your, for your belt. At, yeah. Yes, it should do. It I, I don't know. I mean, listen. I'm saying yes. Yeah. Uh, it, hey, listen. It'd be, it'd be cruel if it didn't. Yeah. That means you could you could win a belt. Keep it for seven fights, but not get a win. Therefore, not go along to that belt yeah. outright. No, we don't know. To be cleared. Do you understand why both fighters feel a bit deflated after that? Everybody else is elated, but they're the only ones that are uh, sort of bringing it down a little bit. Yeah, of course. Uh, look, I think that Paul thought he won the fight. I think when he watches it back, he probably realised that, that, that he, he, Nathan Heaney was probably just the, the deserved winner, even though it was close and Paul was coming on strong. Nathan Heaney, look, it's just it's just an instant reaction. He wanted to win the fight. He didn't want to draw. I think he'd feel much better about his performance in the morning. I mean, our overall perception is that Nathan Heaney won the fight, but we're not up here thinking that was a robbery. No. We're not up here screaming the place down. I could see a draw. Yeah, listen, I had no problem with a draw. I had no problem with one round, two rounds e mm. either way, down to interpretation. Uh, but the I know one thing, the 11th and the 12th live long. And what was interesting, watching those early highlights, is how sharp Heaney looked in rounds yeah. one, two, three, and four, mm. and five. He looked incredibly sharp. Yeah, we mentioned that we actually said he's boxing really well. Really sharp. Really sharp. He's got this really like herky-jerky style especially early on in the fight and it's, it's hard to read the opponents can't seem to read it and he's, he's thrown from strange angles as well but I thought he looked he looked really good at parts Nathan Heaney I'm talking about mm -hmm. and then he just kind of yeah. I, he just he just died not died a wee bit but just the tank went a little bit and and that affected his performance clearly all right well let's hope we're all heading to stoke this summer boys hey eh? uh, let's have a look at what else went went on tonight because liam davis we have to mention him he was undoubtedly one of the stars of the show this evening i mean this is just a statement performance from him second round one minute 17 seconds yeah my, that uppercut up, up was a beautiful oh. beautiful shot and the left hook kind of just knocked them over on the way down the uppercut was a was a beauty um Big, big, massive statement from Liam Davies tonight. And look, people, people are going to laugh and criticise, but I knew he has all the belts. <laughs> Liam Davies has the IBO, which some people, you know, class as a world title, whatever, but it's not one of the major ones. I knew he's got to be looking for opponents. There's only a, a certain amount of people that he if can't If he stays fight. at Super Bantam, if he stays he's got to be on the list. But he I, said I, he wants to stay at Super Bantam. Absolutely, yeah. He has said he wanted to do that for a while. He will do it for a couple of fights. Liam Davies should be in line at some point very, very soon to fight the Nui. And, and I think it's it's a good fight. It's a tough fight, but, I mean, he's not going in there to get blew away, I don't think. Hey, listen, the amount of people that have fought a Nui and been blown away, good fighters that have gone there with absolutely no chance, Liam's not at the top of that list, trust me. He wouldn't be going there as an absolute rank outsider, going there yeah. to be knocked out. And several have over the last years yeah. at different Nui weights. Let's get it right. Right now, I'd send him out there. You know, Fulton went out there unbeaten. The, the, mm. the, the American kid got smashed to bits. That's the reality remember of fighting Inoue in Japan. It's, it's a tough test. Remember what Denner done, a, uh, the first fight? Absolutely. He pushed him reasonably close, you know, and um, 
I think at this stage of their careers, although Donar is, is the bigger name and he's done a lot more in his career, Liam Davies is a better fighter probably than Donar at this stage. And, and he's been speaking for six months, nearly a year, uh, uh, Liam Davies, about uh, Anui. He wants to talk yeah. about Anui. When we interview him, we don't really want to talk about Anui. When we talk to him at press conferences, we don't, we don't really want to talk about Anui. He's the one that keeps saying it. He's working on the theory, and this man will know this. If I want to be the best at my weight, whether it's super bantam, whether it's featherweight, whether it's super featherweight, I want to, I want to fight the yeah, best at my weight. Yeah, of course you do. Because I'll, I'll let you in a secret, Beck. They're not right. These boxers aren't right. <laughs> Instead of going down this route, making a few quid and having an easy route, they're not right. But they here, always go that way. And here's another big part of the equation. <laughs> he, he'll want to go and beat Anui. Yeah, he'll absolutely. He'll that he can, he can yeah. beat him. And, and people may laugh at that and say there's no chance. He's a massive underdog going into the fight. It's an opportunity for him, but the payday with an Anui fight Absolutely. is massive as well, and that's very, very appealing. And it's a guy who is full of confidence after his last couple of fights. Let's talk about Joe Joyce and perhaps uh -huh. the confident levels, the confidence levels of where he is at. It was sort of the return of Joe Joyce tonight after back-to-back -back defeats last year, not the year he wanted. I mean, be honest, Steve, where was he at tonight? I, I, do you know, I'm not really sure. You know, I got that one massively wrong. I got a few fights wrong tonight. I got the winners right. I just got the method of victory uh, very wrong. I, I, I couldn't see uh, Cash Alley going past four or five rounds. And I knew Joe would be a bit rusty, but I thought he would adjust during the first round, the second round, and the third round. Um, I, I, I wasn't impressed with Joe tonight. I'm delighted he's back. I've always liked Big Joe. I've been covering his fights for a long time. Good finish, but by that, at that stage, Cash Alley had nothing. Uh, I didn't enjoy the fight. I actually, no, I, I, I mean, that's the bottom line. I didn't enjoy yeah, the look, fight. It was a hard fight to enjoy, and I think that that Joe, hopefully, like we said earlier on, that that that's kind of uh, gives him a little bit of confidence yeah. back. He's had two bad defeats back to back. He's got a win, although it wasn't pretty. That's what he's done, and and hopefully we see a, a, an improved version because it needs to be a lot better. Than well, that. where does he go next? I mean, what's what's the opponent for him? He must be sat at home watching oh. what's going on elsewhere in the heavyweight division, thinking, how how am I sat here? Hey, what's you know, happened? He beat Daniel Dubois to a standstill, forced Daniel to take a knee. He knocked out Joseph Park in an absolute mm. war. Both of those two are in this absolute Saudi blender of yeah. million million dollar paydays. So Joe would want to be there, but I, I've got to be honest with you I'm watching that fight there and, and he would I can't really see where he goes in Saudi unless he goes in as an opponent yeah. if he had got rid of Cash Alley in a round or two we could have been we could have been a re restructuring rebuilding forget what happened in those two fights last year uh, with, 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 with Zhang get him out there make him a contender again overnight he's still got to have a hard fight before he gets and I'm, I'm not going to steal this lane on Bonte but Bonte did say it and I'll let, I'll let you say it about if you can finish this off, Bonsi, but if this was previous to the Zhang oh defeat, it's a one-round fight. You know, it, 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 if Zhang had called out, pulled out last year on the Thursday of that week and, and, and Cash Alley had been found, that Joe Joyce from last year would have walked through him in a round. And that's no disrespect to Cash Alley. We've been building him up all night. That's a bottom line. That's a fact. Now, whether, whether... Big Joe left something in the ring in those two nights against Zhang, or if he's just struggling for confidence and timing. That we don't know. We didn't discover tonight in nearly 10 rounds, and we might end, we may end up discovering it overseas when he fights Ngannou or Wilder or someone like that, because he's going into the deep end, trust me.